Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Can you believe that we have made it to the end of Summerween? It is day seven of Summerween, friends, and like I said, it's the last day of Summerween. The readathons that I participate in go by so fast for some reason. I just want them to last forever. Um, but also, that means today is the last day of daily vlogs. Um, so reading plans for today include the last book on my Summerween TBR, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. This has been on my TBR for a couple of years now. Um, I had some people in my book club that I'm in read this and talk about it very highly. A couple people on YouTube that I watch have really, really enjoyed this. Um, but what made me pick it up for this readathon was McKay's recent video talking about horror books to read in summertime. So I actually picked this up last night and read a bit of it in the dark. And I loved that experience so much because the writing in here is very conducive to like a nighttime creepy read. Um, I made it to page 75 last night. So I don't have much more to read. Actually, I feel like I'll be able to fly through this today. I'm just really enjoying the writing and the atmosphere and the unsettling nature of the narrative. Um, I don't honestly know too much of what this is. Um, nothing really scary per se or, you know, crazy has happened. It's just kind of setting the stage of these kids that all live in very close proximity to one another. They always hang out. Um, it feels like it's set in like the 80s or something like that. And I know this is a fictionalized account of something that actually took place. I'm not privy to all that. I don't really know the background history of this story, but I do know that the author reads the audiobook, you guys. So I'm definitely listening to this one on audio through my Hoopla app, which is connected with my library. So I'm listening to it for free. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying it so far. I really can't tell you like a plot of what's happening. It's just introducing the characters, the relationships with one another. They're all pretty young. Um, I would say like maybe 10 to 13, 14 maybe.
You're not filming now, are you? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. All right, friends, I'm here with a reading update. I made it to page 112. Have a little bit more of a sense of what the story is. I'm gonna be completely disturbed by this book. I already know because some like horror readers, some like hardcore horror readers were having a hard time with this one. Um, they said that the writing was really good, but the story itself, especially since it's based off of like true events was just like, horrifying and yes so basically you have like I said this neighborhood of kids and they all hang out and it's the one of the guys as he is older kind of telling the story of when they were younger and I guess his next door neighbor Ruth has like a few kids of her own but she is also taking care of like her sister's kids or something like that um so she's taken in two other little girls and Ruth is the person that is giving me the heebie-jeebies, the bad vibes, and she kind of just was from the beginning. But also the kids play this really weird game. Um, they call it the game and he was explaining it like, I guess there's like this orchard that someone is in and then they have to like run out and tag other people out or whatever and then they're only safe in the orchard or something like that but basically that person always loses because they always get caught I don't know it kind of sounds like tag but also like hide and seek a mixture of that but anyway whoever like at the end the person that loses you basically get to do anything you want to them like basically like tie them up kick them spit on them whatever and <laughs> It seems like Ruth is kind of making the boys and herself, well not making herself, she herself is torturing this girl, but also making the boys in the neighborhood like a part of it. And the, the first example that I came to that kind of just like blew my mind is, so our main character, I keep forgetting his name and there's so many boys, so I get them all confused anyway, David. So David is the main guy, I think. Um, and, but there's also like Woofer and Donnie and um, yeah. But anyway, so it's like Meg is the girl and then David is the main guy. But like I said, there's a whole bunch of kids. Anyway, um, so he is grounded, but his mom goes out to the store. So he sneaks over next door to like see what the kids are up to. And he hears laughing and giggling and stuff like that. And he goes upstairs to their room and he sees that the boys have Meg cornered in the room and they're tickling her. And I guess one of the boys like touches her breast and she smacks him and then the boys are like, oh my gosh, what a bitch. I can't believe you smacked me. I'm gonna tell mom. And she's like, you know, go ahead and tell her like, and then obviously they shouldn't have touched her breast. You know what I'm saying? And then like, was it an accident or was it on purpose? Like, does it really even matter? Um, so they tell Ruth and then Ruth comes upstairs and I think Sarah, Meg's younger sister is in the room and she's like disabled. Like she has like a brace in between her legs and stuff. And, um, she ends up punishing Sarah and because she didn't stop her sister from hitting one of the boys. And I'm like, what? And she like did it. It was very dramatic and very graphic. Like she's like, she pulled up her dress. She pulled down her underwear. She gave her 20 lashings and like the boys were all watching and it was just like, and she stopped at 18 and was like, you owe me two like what look how big my fiddle fig is you guys it's taller than i am now <laughs> isn't that amazing it's so big look isn't it awesome so i definitely had to take a break because i have gotten to the torture part and quite frankly it's just a lot to handle so i'm having a popsicle strawberry popsicle and then I'm going to dive back in. It's just really, really disturbing, especially knowing that this like actually happened. So Meg has actually reached out to the authorities and they went to the house <laughs> and it just got worse. And then 
um, David talked to his dad, not in so many words, but was asking him questions. And I feel like, are the other adults around not seeing or hearing what's going on? I mean, I guess not, but like, my heart is literally breaking and it's very hard to read. So yeah, I just needed to take a break. Um, but I think when I start it up again, I'm just going to detach my soul from my body and literally power through it because I don't want to drag it out <laughs> at all. This is kind of a book that you need to go in knowing that it is dark and disturbing and you're not going to like it. You're going to enjoy the writing. The writing is really good, smooth. It has that, oh, I think it's set in the seventies. It has that like smooth writing style but like it's dark you guys and yeah all right friends we have come to the end of day number seven of summer ween i'm so happy that i decided to participate huge shout out to gabby and olivia for hosting um this was my first time participating and I got a lot of reading done. Um, I daily vlogged all week, so you will know my thoughts and my feelings for every single book that I read, but I wanted to go through what I read. Um, but let me go ahead and give you a couple of final thoughts on The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. Um, <sighs> hmm, think I can recommend this. Um, just because it is based on a true story and it's very dark and disturbing, descriptive, gory, terrifying, torture, and all of the things, all of the trigger warnings. So I'm glad that I saved this for the end of the readathon. I am proud of myself that I tackled this book. Um, I could get very emotional talking about this book. I did like the writing. I think maybe it wouldn't have hit me as hard, probably it still would have. I don't know. Like, I did enjoy the writing. I wish it was fiction though. I definitely do want to pick up other books by this author that are fiction. True crime is just really hard in general. Um, and it's just horrifying the things that people will do to people. And this is just very, it's like, just imagine a family member, like two young girls moving in to a house, a foster situation. And I don't know if they were like related or like what, but all I know is, is that they thought this is our fresh start at this house and there's lots of other kids around and, but then those people turn out to be horrible, horrible people. And the amount of strength of Meg is astounding. And the fact that Ruth forced some people to witness things and do things that they didn't want to do. Some people wanted to do those crazy messed up things. And what they did to Meg was absolutely horrifying, but it was equally horrifying for her to force people to be there and watch things that they didn't want to watch, participate in things that they didn't want to participate in. So I'm not gonna rate this, um, but Suffice it to say that I read it super quickly, even though it was a very hard read. Um, and I do want to pick up other stuff by this author. There was some author notes and an interview in the back. I just, this is my copy, I'm gonna keep it so I can look at that later, but I just need to be done with this book for now. But um, the writing is like a five out of five, just the story is so terrifying, so. I don't know. Is it weird saying that this is a five out of five? I don't know. Yeah, it was crazy. You can't, I don't know. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know. 
if you like really dark true crime stuff then i would recommend it but if you're not into horror if you're not into true crime steer clear dark horror human horror you know okay moving on i thought we should go through the prompts and see if i read any of them um, the first prompt, let me bring them up here, was to read a book in the dark at night. I did that last night with this one. I also read some of this one in the dark at the very beginning, and I think that's it. Um, read a book with Halloween colors on the cover. Halloween colors to me are like orange and black, and I think this one does have like orange and black it's like the flames and the hats and stuff like that but also this one is kind of orange and black and it has like green and stuff too so maybe that one is halloween colors um a slasher i read many slashers um this one was a slasher this one was a slasher um yeah this one was a slasher um this one and this one maybe so all of these were slashers um let's see read a book with haunt in the title i did not do that um i do have like two books on my tbr that have haunt one has haunt and one has haunting or something like that but yeah didn't read that and then bake or make a treat with your spooky read um so i did make that cowboy caviar which i considered a treat because i got to snack on it like all week and then i also made those easy like oatmeal squares or whatever that was really good as well so that was my treat so the only thing i really didn't do was to read a book with haunt in the title but let's go ahead and quickly go through in case you didn't want to watch any of the other vlogs i thought i would just like wrap up like final thoughts on the books you just want them all in one space i'm going to talk you through quickly books that i read this week um starting off day number one i read let's see Starting off day number one, I read Kill River and I rated this two out of five stars. I thought it was too much description, not enough action. It is the first book in a series, but I do not think I'm going to continue on. I rated this two out of five stars. The next day I picked up Fun House, which was like my first point horror that I ever read. I really enjoyed this. Um, it is dated. It's a vintage YA horror story, but I was just in it to win it and I rated it four stars. Then I picked up You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca and this was just so plotless. Like in the beginning I was like okay I know it's going to be weird. It's a story within a story but the story actually in the story is like a larger part of the story and I was liking that at first and then I started liking the stuff out of the story and then by the end I didn't like how either of them ended so I ended up rating this two stars. The next day I picked up The Lifeguard and I did not like this as much as I did Funhouse. I ended up rating The Lifeguard three stars which is still good. Then I picked up a graphic novel. Not that I was trying to read it. <laughs> I just I read it the, during the week so I'm going to talk to you about it. I read this and I thought the color palette was super pretty. I liked the story and I would love to know like more about these characters and have this become like a series but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I ended up rating this one three stars and then let's see then I read Beach Party which this is the one that I didn't really like. I'm rating this one two stars. I was leaning towards three but no it's two stars and then next up I read The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay and I hated this and I rated it a one star and then and um, yesterday I read a little bit of Louisa now and then I made it to page like 91 so I read a good chunk so far and I probably will finish this before the end of the month and if you want to hear all of my in-depth mini reviews for every single book I read you need to join my patreon for that or follow me on goodreads and the storycraft and I'll do reviews after my patrons get that information first that's why if you follow me on goodreads you always see rating and review to come later because i type out reviews for all of the books um after i finish them and then i share all that information with my patrons and then i go back and add that on goodreads and the story graph anyway i should finish this before the end of the month 
and then I read Beach House yesterday and I really, really love this. Super atmospheric, super summery, um, great kind of like murder mystery, you know, mayhem type read. Again, it's vintage horror, YA. So I ended up rating this four out of five stars just because the ending trope wasn't my favorite but I really, it probably would have been a five stars if it ended up a little bit differently. And then today I read this. So yeah, that is my summer ween week. I did watch Scream 1 and 2, and today I will be watching Scream 3, which was originally supposed to be the final chapter of the trilogy, but then they went on to make four and five. So I will be continuing those as well. I'm probably gonna be ranking the Scream movies and sharing my thoughts over on Patreon. So definitely check the description box for links to all of my other vlogs, my Patreon, all of the things. And yeah, that's it for me. That's Summer Ween, you guys. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all are having a great day or night. I hope you had fun if you participated in Summer Ween and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye!